an immigrant is never an easy one. Oftentimes we leave things that we're familiar with, like family, friends, food, in search of bigger opportunities and pursuing the big dream. Join us today as we share the amazing stories of people who have made that kind of leap. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of Community Connect where we get to talk about the incredible ways people find to connect to our local community. I am really excited about today's episode of the show because I have with me two amazing people who are global citizens and will be sharing their experiences of connecting both locally and globally. Um, so I have Zen and Apkar. So um, Avkar runs a YouTube channel that is quite um, honestly really intimidating. He has over 250,000 subscribers yeah. and um, his videos have had over a million views. Uh, in total, more than 15 million. He's an education activist and um, he just shares with the rest of us um, the things that he's learned, some of his um, amazing opportunities in his journey, um, having been educated and coming from Chad. Thank you for joining us today, Apkar. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and then Zen, of course. Um, Zen moved with his immediate family to Canada from Pakistan mm -hmm. um, at the age of 13. Mm -hmm. And now Zen is a father. He's also the chair of the World Partnership Network here in Victoria. It's a local charity that um, raises money to support the Aga Khan Foundation. Um, earlier this year, you raised $175,000 to right. support yeah. the Aga Khan. What does the Aga Khan Foundation do exactly? So World Partnership Walk is a initiative of the Aga Khan Foundation Canada. Right. Um, they run uh, various programs in Asia and Africa mm -hmm. uh, that uh, are focused on eliminating poverty in the world. Okay. So programs around health, education, uh, food security, um, and of course Canadians have done a great job uh, fundraising over mm -hmm. the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we've raised uh, over $100 million over the history of the walk. Wow. And uh, in Victoria, we were able to raise $175,000. Incredible. Yes, <laughs> Canadians are incredible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, and Avkar, you moved from Chad a few years ago. Um, uh, to Canada. Yes. I actually moved to Canada from Malaysia. Oh, from mm. Malaysia, so, yes. Uh, just like how you, you introduced us, I'm, I'm a true definition of the citizen of the world because <laughs> I lived in so many countries. So the country that I moved from, from was Malaysia. And the reason why I went to Malaysia was to further my education. And I had the opportunity to further my education there. Mm -hmm. uh, but at one point of time, I had to think of uh, the future and the long-term future, right. and that's what, what led me to here. Okay, so why Canada? Why did you decide on Canada? Well, for, for various reasons. Uh, the first reason is, as a child, most of the things that people think are given, mm -hmm. like education, healthcare, and so on, th those were luxuries for me. So I started my school when I was only 12. Mm. So in many countries, that seems shocking, but uh, for my background, that's, that's actually not. Because I still have people in my family who are adults and they are illiterate, unfortunately. Right. Mm. So I had to think of, of my kids and their future and take them to a place where, where what seems something you should get by default, like mm -hmm. education, mm -hmm. is something that will get, they will get by default. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, I was trying to be in a place where it's really inclusive. Right. Uh, as a minority, sometimes uh, you live in places where you are being told every single day you are actually a minority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, and I've, and I've faced that a lot in the mm -hmm. past. So mm -hmm. I didn't want my kids to go through the same thing right. that I went through. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I feel very lucky uh, to be here, especially here in Victoria. Yes. And I'm happy that my kids will get the chance to grow up here. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, for you, it was your parents making that decision, and mm -hmm. they had to make a lot of sacrifices as absolutely, well. Yeah, so, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, the main reason for us was to move here for education. Okay. Um, with uh, our siblings, we're four of us. I'm the youngest one. Um, and we got to a point as a family that the opportunities weren't there for the future right. uh, for for individuals to get higher education and, mm -hmm. and actually be you know involved in, in changing the world right mm -hmm. um, so my parents made the tough decision of, of uh, wrapping everything up yeah. from wherever they are yeah. and and moving to uh, moving to Canada which was their second immigration right mm -hmm. so they moved from India to Pakistan okay. and then from Pakistan then to Canada 
I look back at the once I had to move here mm -hmm. and how <laughs> what type of a journey that was and what that did, mm -hmm. uh, and I think about wow, what what a sacrifice for them to be able to do that yeah. twice in yeah. their and life. Your and your dad was a professional. Yeah, my dad is an architect by by profession who yeah. had his own business mm -hmm. uh, back in in Pakistan. And you know, it's it's interesting because then you start thinking about, uh, you know, now you know when before I had a child, you think about. Would I be able to do that right. right for somebody and and now it's crystal clear yes mm -hmm, I would mm -hmm. right you would do whatever you because needed to because of the opportunity yeah. right okay and um I'm kind of just going to touch on something you mentioned about yeah. um having left a place where you were a majority everything that you see around you looks like you uh, yeah. people sound like you yeah. and then having to you know move to the other end of the world yeah. where you I you too we're obviously minorities yeah. Um, yeah having to navigate all of that change and what that comes with what, are there like specific instances where you had to make tough choices and you know just really dig your heels mm. in honestly it's it's very difficult uh but what made it easy for me is that i had my goal very close to clear right i knew exactly why i was leaving i knew exactly what i wanted to achieve mm -hmm. I didn't know how I'm going to achieve it. Mm. Uh, I learned that throughout the years, but because I had my goal crystal clear, all those things seemed really uh, secondary. Mm. I, I didn't mm. mind it. I had to live with it, I understood, because I needed to reach a place where I can achieve my goal yes. and develop myself. And when I do that, I knew then I would have the luxury of having choices. Right. And when I had those choices, I had to choose what's best mm -hmm. for me and my family. Right. And then, so coming from Chad, your first language is in English, of course. Uh, no, uh, of course. <laughs> I mean, uh, so my first language, the lang I, I, at home we were speaking two languages. Okay. We were speaking mm -hmm. Arabic mm -hmm. and we were speaking Dazaga. Okay. This is, guys, this is, this is my tribe's Mother language. Mm -hmm. This is the language that I communicate with my parents until now. Okay. Uh, so mm -hmm. these two languages were the main languages spoken mm -hmm. at our households. However, uh, I learned a bit of English at school. Okay. Uh, and that's where the love of the language developed with me. Mm -hmm. And that's where I decided I want to study university in English as well. Mm -hmm. And that's what led me to Malaysia because mm -hmm. it seemed at that time the best option for me in terms of price point, in terms of opportunities, uh, because I was going to study in English there. Mm -hmm. uh, the price is a fraction of what you will pay mm -hmm. in, let's say, in Canada or the US or the UK. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for Zen, are there like specific things that you, specific challenges that yeah. you had to? It was, it was interesting, I was just reflecting on, on, on you know, how I got here and then and, Akar, and your story. And it's, it's fascinating to hear, like you, you were like, you know, focused on where you wanted to and what you wanted to do. For me, it was very, very interesting because I was so young, right. just teenager, mm -hmm. right? Just dealing with the teenage times. Mm -hmm. I really didn't think about the the notion of other, right? Right? When I was leaving Pakistan, it was, oh yeah, we're moving as a family, so mm -hmm. we've got our our pod, mm -hmm. right? And we're moving together, and we're gonna go to this place, and it's gonna be fabulous, and 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 it, and it is, it is a fabulous place. The realization of otherness mm -hmm. and difference started when I got here, um, and. And it was, it wasn't very apparent in the beginning, mm -hmm. but as I went through school, I went through, you know, you have different experiences when you're and you're just trying to socially integrate into the community. Yes. Then you, then you learn is that, you know, people's questions. I remember distinctly somebody asked me a question at one time. They said, do you have TVs in Pakistan? Oh my. <laughs> I've heard like, things like, oh, yeah. do you live with giraffes? Do yeah, you yeah. see zebras every yeah. time? And, and it's interesting like because at that time I'm like, of course we do. What do you, <laughs> like, you know, like, what do right. you mean? Do you, or your English is really good. I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, we speak like, English. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, and, and at that time you're like, oh, well, you, when you don't know anything about the world. And now that you look back at it as an adult, when I look back at it, I'm going, those were questions that people were trying to ask in the best possible way way they knew how to ask right. about understanding you, mm -hmm. right? Going through high school mm -hmm. was very interesting as, as, uh, as an immigrant. I can, uh, I can imagine. Uh, I didn't come here as um, a teenager. I, mm -hmm. I was in my mid-20s mm -hmm. when I decided to make that move. Mm -hmm. And even at that point, um, there were lots of things I needed to adjust to. Mm -hmm. When people ask me, what, what do you miss about Nigeria? One mm -hmm. of the first things I want to say is, I miss the craziness. I miss mm -hmm. the chaos. It's like <laughs> so different. Like around here, people are so 
so <laughs> organized. The system is very, I mean, certain things about being Nigerian doesn't work mm -hmm. um, for me um, in terms of the economy, the politics, and all of that. Um, you would never get a perfect mm -hmm. setting. Um, mm -hmm. It's just for you to make do with whatever you have. And mm -hmm. that's what I had to do coming mm -hmm. here as well, mm -hmm. like having to, you know, learn and just make that adjustment. Something that I'm sure rings true for all of us would be mm -hmm. immigrants being perceived as needy people. Is that an experience that you've had? <clears throat> Uh, not directly to my face. Okay. However, I can sense it sometimes. Right. Sometimes in the body language mm -hmm. and how people interact with you, you can sense they feel that you actually came to take the job mm -hmm. or you came to, to get a handout. Mm -hmm. But what they don't realize is that uh, we came as established professionals. Exactly. We came with qualifications. Exactly. We came I have to also sometimes not blame them for thinking that mm. because there is a huge lack of education. Mm. A lot of people don't realize that an immigrant, when they come in, they bring cash with them. Yes. Mm -hmm. They bring their qualification mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. A lot of companies and even countries, they pay for professionals to come mm -hmm. to work with them because human resource is the most important resource. Right. And also, we are all taxpayers, we're paying taxes, mm -hmm. we, are, we are contributing to the economy. Mm -hmm. So that's an important role that people need to really know about. Mm -hmm. right. And there needs to be an element of education there mm -hmm. to let people know mm -hmm. that this is actually happening. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. right. Absolutely, like if I look at my family, you know, when we moved to Canada, you know, my parents, you know, invested a lot of money uh, into coming here. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't to make life easier in any way. Mm -hmm. Like it was, you know, you don't come here to, to take, you come here to get engaged, to invest. right? You come mm -hmm. here to get engaged, mm -hmm. you come here for a better life. And that means that you understand what your roles and responsibilities are right. when you're coming to a new country mm -hmm. uh, and are going to integrate. You, you understand that it's going to be difficult, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it's, it's not that people come here to take. Always take. And I, I, I can see, like, you know, there may be perceptions of that. And, and I find that at that time, maybe I was too young to notice mm -hmm. those, those perceptions. I notice them now more. Um, and, and just because of things that are happening in the media and, and the conversations that are happening mm -hmm. very openly yeah. about mm -hmm. it, it, and it comes down to lack of education. Yeah. It comes down to lack of understanding of, of our countries, Canada's immigration policies, right? right. Uh, of what do you need to be mm -hmm. or what do you need to put forward in order to get to this country? Mm -hmm. It's not easy, mm -hmm. it's not. Uh, right? And it, and it takes years. Exactly. Our, our immigration journey took at least five to seven years mm -hmm. just to be able to Same. get yeah. your Citizen. permit to say mm -hmm. you can come to Canada. Yes. And then after that, you come in as a landed immigrant. Right. And then you right. have to wait for a while to mm -hmm. become a citizen. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a journey. It's mm -hmm. not yeah. that we were born into being. For, for me, coming in as an international student, mm -hmm. when I convert um, how much I had to pay as fees uh, to the, my local mm -hmm. Nigerian currency, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an investment. And mm -hmm. then you couple it with the fact that I have to live here, I have to pay yes. rent, I have to, you know, pay transportation mm -hmm. and all of mm -hmm. that. That's me giving back. So mm -hmm. it's not me just coming to take get free education someone decides i'm raising a family around here that's another level of yeah, investment and, and and that that doesn't say that you know the the life of an immigrant is harder than the life of of somebody who's been here for two or three generations right, right? L life is hard yeah right, right. Like Whichever it's difficult, way. right? you <laughs> yes. look at it it's difficult what it you know it says is that we can have different people living together mm -hmm. uh, with different paths mm -hmm. different uh, different skills different mm -hmm. backgrounds and 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 be in a in a mosaic society, right? Mm -hmm. Diversity, mm -hmm. as uh, you know, many have said, diversity is strength. It's not a yes. weakness, right? Yes. It is that. And, and how do we harness the power of that diversity? Yes. Uh, and what can we do to build those bridges so people who have lived here for longer feel the belonging? Mm -hmm. I think more I look at uh, my life and and how the paths that it took. Mm -hmm. The the thing that that I was always craving was belonging. Right. right, belonging to a group, belonging to a bigger community, belonging mm -hmm. and having, having felt like you're important to somebody yes, or yes. some group, right? Uh, and I think we can create that. Yes, and, and, and that's yeah. not something that you have as an immigrant, which is why it looks like it's a lot d more difficult yeah, for yeah. us. Thank you so much for sharing all of those. Um, I feel like we're only just getting started with um, this topic of global citizenship and making a difference from where you are. Thank you so much for sharing your Thank time you with us today. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much. We'll be having a follow-up to this episode of the show um, as we talk about the exciting ways people find ways to connect locally and um, to make a difference globally. See you next time on the show.